Good morning, everybody. Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District Representative Tom Tiffany is back for our monthly breakfast with Tiffany show today, Thursday, July 13th, 2023. For com, I'm Ben Dryden welcoming all of you to the show this morning. A quick special thank you to some of our recent guests on Dryden Wire Live, including Wisconsin's 25th District Senator Romaine Quinn, Shell Lake Police Chief and Washburn County Board Chair Dave Wilson, Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, who joins me every Tuesday for our Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy show. And for the first time on the show was a good friend, Wisconsin farm boy, writer, and consultant who tells the hidden stories of rural America, Brian Reisinger. I, I think you probably know Brian now I think about it, huh? Uh, you can watch a recording of those live shows and, of course, all of our live shows on our website at DrydenWare.com, right here on our Facebook page under the Videos tab, or just go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search DrydenWire. But today we're chatting with Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District Representative who joins us every second Thursday of the month, Congressman Tom Tiffany. Tom, good morning, sir. It's good to be with you, Superman. Do you like that? I, I pull hey, this out only for special shirt. guests. <laughs> <laughs> great shirt. Love it. Love it. Well, hope, I figured, you, hope you and Jerusha and the family have been well. We have been. Thank you. And actually, Jerusha was just asking this morning before she left for work. She said, who's on the show this morning? I'm like, well, it's Congressman Tiffany's on. And she even mentioned, like, you know, I haven't seen him in a while. Sounds like we're kind of missing each other at some events. Uh, when you are in our area, I'll go to one, but you weren't at that one. And then you go, hey, speaking of that, were you just in our area... Did you go to the Spooner Rodeo Parade or the Spooner Rodeo? Were you in the parade? Did you go to this? I didn't see you at the parade. Yes, I, I was at the parade, and it was terrific. It was a lot of people. Um, it appeared to me, so I've only been to a couple of them, and I think it was last year when Main Street was tore up, yeah. and they had to have the parade at an alternate site. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 And I, I thought there were far more people this year with it being back on the – regular location going down main street it was great i i just thought it was a great parade yeah i didn't go to that so the week before on saturday uh well sheriff fitzgerald his wife jerusha and i and romaine quinn and his wife raquel and representative dave armstrong his wife and a couple kids uh, we all went to the freedom music fest and then two nights later we went to the third of july fireworks so i met my going outside quota for the month of two I'll go outside twice a month and go to something. And I did both of those like within three days. So when the Spooner Rodeo Parade and the rodeo came up, I'm like, nope, put it in a different month if you want me to go. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. no, it was a great parade. Uh, uh, And me and my crew, we did five parades on the 4th of July over kind of on uh, the Monaco side of the district where I live. And uh, yeah, great parades. Three Lakes, Rhinelander, Tomahawk, Lake Tomahawk and Monaco did all those parades. That was a blast. And actually um the kids were home for a few days too and we had a chance to canoe the tomahawk river it was a great time Manaqua, that's like f- where you, is that where you live yep or is it yep. i saw that on this is a whole other thing i just started watching agents of shield on disney plus it's a marvel thing i'm like ah whatever it's a uh, these series these shows and one of the people the main guy he was from Manaqua. And they show a picture of Manaqua. I'm like, Manaqua, I've heard that before. I'm like, wait, I think that's where Tom lives. Now, really? I've never heard Manaqua ever referenced in any movie or TV show, but it's on Marvel's yeah. thing. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Hey, I have a question. So we always like to talk about anything going on in Washington, D.C. or in Wisconsin. If we get time, I know we have a hard cutoff at 9 o'clock today. You have some things to get to. Uh, I did hopefully want to kind of get your perspective a little bit on Evers' budget Simply because I believe you were on, well, that's when we first got to know each other. You first started doing stuff with Dreadwire. You were on the Joint Finance Committee when you were in the Senate in Wisconsin. Now, of course, the budget has gone through. Just kind of want to get your first takes from that. Uh, But before that, uh, oh, shoot, you know what? We already have a question. Let's get to that real fast. And then I want to talk about uh, what's going on in Washington, D.C. I saw you or a photo of you on Fox and Friends yesterday, some big deal in committee and hearings or something. Here's the question from Kevin James. Hi, Tom. I was wondering if we could get PF, PFAS. I don't know if there's like a word to say that. PFAS. PFAS. Yeah, PFAS assistance in the upcoming farm bill. Pluto waters near me are disgusting. Something needs to be done. God bless you. So, um, I mean, 
first of all, I would need to uh, I would need to know is it PFAS that's the problem, and it, it may well be, Kevin. Um, um, perhaps that's all been researched. One of the things that we did in the last session of Congress is we authorized additional spending um, to do more research in regards to PFAS. The, um, uh, because it is a real concern, but uh, we authorized more money to do research because we don't know the extent of the problem at this point. And we really need more information before we start making public policy decisions that are going to spend billions of dollars. Um, so it's a concern, uh, some things need to be done, but let's make sure that we're spending that money in a way that we're going to have success or have a greater chance of success rather than just throwing money at a problem and saying, okay, I spent that money or we spent that money as government and, you know, people go, well, I wash my hands of it now because I spent the money. Sure. I don't like that approach. I really appear, um, uh, prefer the approach of let's make sure we have the research. Let's make sure we have as much information as possible to be able to apply to the problem and hopefully fix it. Uh, we have one more here. I don't understand any of this, so hopefully you do. Why did the House Freedom Caucus rhinos vote out MTG? Do you agree with that? So first, <laughs> uh, what is this about? Well, let's do the acronyms first. So rhinos, for those I've heard not that. familiar, Republican in name only. Uh, MTG is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, sure. And she's, and she's been in the House Freedom Caucus. I sit in the House Freedom Caucus. And um, it was just... Uh, let's see, in the last week, um, there's been some real friction um, with Marjorie Taylor Greene and a few of the members. And there's so there's been some frustration there by members, been some name calling that's gone on. Um, I would rather not get into the sordid details, but uh, anyhow, the uh, leadership of the House Freedom Caucus said, um, Marjorie, you can't be in here now um, if you're going, if this is the route you're going to go. Sure. So anyhow, um, they have so, parted ways. And do you, I, I think the question there was, do you agree with that? Um, you know, I didn't have a vote on that because the executive committee um, took care of it. But generally, I mean, there was some really harsh words that were being used and going back and forth there. So generally, yeah, I, I agree with what happened. Uh, happened there. I'm hoping over time that you can mend fences. I mean, in politics, you know, somebody that is your opposition today, or you're not seeing eye to eye with them today, maybe your friend tomorrow. I'm hoping we can mend fences in the future. Sure. And this ties in directly with uh, what I wanted to bring up here. Congressman loved you grilling corrupt rate yesterday. He and Biden, uh, crime family are sick. We need a company. So, okay. I'm sorry. That actually wasn't a question, but Hey, that was nice. <laughs> uh, so yesterday, and I got this clip. So yesterday, I, I just Googled your name as I do the day before, every time I come on a show and just hit news and see, I don't know, what, what have you been up to? Any stories that have been written about you? And I saw this, and wow, Fox News, by the way, they got great production for their shows. <laughs> it was just great. Uh, but as FBI chief, so this, I, I believe you were on yesterday, this was yesterday morning, I believe, or sometime yesterday, maybe it was the day before, but FBI chief to testify before House Judiciary Panel and then I looked up a story, and the headline was Christopher Ray to testify before House Judiciary Committee. So I'm assuming you must be on that. So first, what is that committee? And then what has been going on for the people who have not been following this? What actually is happening? So there's two committees I serve on, Natural Resources, which I'm going to immediately after this interview, as well as Judiciary. And we had a meeting yesterday. Uh, where we had the FBI director, Christopher Ray before us. And the interview that um, you're mentioning there uh, with Brian Kilmeade, uh, that was in the run up uh, prior to the um, uh, prior to the meeting yeah. that we had yesterday where we were questioning FBI director Ray. And I was just giving a preview of what I thought uh, would happen and a preview of some of the questions that I wanted to ask. And um, so, um, that's what happened uh, with that interview with Fox. Okay, so then, you, so you did this. Is this over with now? It was a one day thing, or is this ongoing? Yes, the hearing um, uh, happened yesterday, and yeah. it concluded yesterday. Um, there will be additional questions that we'll have for Director FBI Director Ray. Um, I thought he was less than forthcoming. I mean, 
we would consistently hear this message that two things consistently from him. One, I can't answer that question because it's an ongoing investigation. And, you know, so we always hear that they, they won't give us inf information. Uh, I'm sorry, I, before uh, you continue, I, uh, I apologize to interrupt, but what is this about? Why was he there? Um, what was this about? So the FBI director was there because we wanted to question him about a whole series of issues that have to do with the FBI and how they're getting information from people. I would um, say to you, I would put it in three buckets. Are they targeting Americans? Are they suppressing information that Americans want to share? Um, and are they censoring Americans? And there seems to be quite, I believe there's conclusive evidence that they have been doing this, um, that they have been targeting some Americans. For example, at the Richmond Diocese of the Catholic Church, they were spying on Catholics at the church. Now, FBI Director Ray said, I was aghast when I heard about that, and that is no longer going on. But I've heard that it may also be happening in southeastern Wisconsin. I don't, I can't prove it at this point, but there's people that are concerned that they've been targeting Catholics um, for whatever reason. Yeah, say FBI. any particular reason or... Uh, that's a really good question. Well, um, I'm sure that the um, person in the FBI that's proposing doing this, they're saying there may be domestic terrorists there. I don't find a lot of domestic terrorists in the Catholic Church. But um, you, uh, so but anyhow, FBI Director Ray said, uh, no, we are not doing that anymore. So you have this targeting that is going on. Then you have the suppression of information that is going on. I asked questions yesterday in regards to Senator Johnson from Wisconsin. Last year, um, they gave him a defensive briefing. And a defensive briefing is when they go to you as an elected official and they say, be careful, this may be happening out here. Well, it turns out whoever set up that defensive briefing was trying to set up Senator Johnson. Because that same person that set up the defensive briefing or someone close to them went and leaked the information to the Washington Post. The Washington Post ran a story critical of Senator Johnson, and it turns out it was all a setup. And I asked him, is this the type of stuff you guys are doing? Because it's very much proven in 2016 that they used the uh, FISA process to target the Trump campaign um, in regards to Russia collusion. Because as Special Counsel Durham told us a couple of weeks ago, tr uh, collusion, uh, Russia collusion with the Trump campaign did not happen. It's a hoax. And yet you had the FBI under previous uh, uh, Director Comey and some of his henchmen like uh, Page, Strzok and others that they were taking information out of context and using it to go after the Trump, um, going after the Trump campaign and going after the Trump administration after 2016. So you have this whole, whole sordid history of events that's going on with the FBI. That's why we had them in. We're saying, are you guys continuing to do this type of stuff? And I can't say for certain that they've stopped it especially after the questioning in regards to Senator Johnson and the activities of 2022. So it led to a final question where I asked um, Director Ray, are you guys going to get involved with the elections in 2024 like you did previous to 2024? And, and of course, he and he said and he was indignant he said no we didn't do that stuff we're not doing that stuff and i said well look at what you did to senator johnson well you're not sharing the whole story there was his answer well i think there's concerns there yet i wanted to put him on the record that he's saying they're not going to uh, inject themselves into the 2024 campaign as they certainly did in 2016. were you satisfied was the I, I don't know how this stuff works. Do you guys, uh, as a, a House Judiciary Committee, do you guys afterwards, you know, everyone leaves and you have a kind of a conversation, you know, a wrap up and do we get this? To, I, don't, I don't know if that happens or not, or is like, yeah, when the meeting, when it's finished, it's finished. Everybody just goes on their own way. 
Was there a wrap up to this? Were, was the committee satisfied with the answers, the results, or, or did that conversation not happen? And if that conversation as a group didn't happen with this committee individually, were you satisfied with like, yeah, that was a good use of our time. We got a lot of answers. Uh, so it was a good use of our time, but no, I was not satisfied with the answers, nor was the committee. And we will be doing follow up in regards to this, because as we go along here, we're finding out more and more information from FBI whistleblowers and IRS whistleblowers saying that the leadership of the Department of Justice and the FBI are not being fully forthcoming. And that's part of where we're going. One of the other questions I asked yesterday is Joe Biden under investigation by the FBI? And it was the classic answer of, I can't comment on investigations that are ongoing, whatever. So that would be a yes. Because of, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and then I, I proceeded to say, is he not under investigation? <laughs> right. And he's like, I can't comment on this, whatever. I think you can take it very clearly that um, President Biden is under investigation and we're seeing more and more information that's coming out in regards to this. And that ultimately is our goal. Well, I suspect some people that are watching here today, they're like, you know, we're, it's kind of frustrating that there isn't more information that has come out and or that you guys haven't acted yet. Um, because some people would say that you should impeach Ray by now. Christopher Ray should be impeached by now. But I disagree with that in the sense that you have to make the case first. You are innocent until you're proven guilty. And I will not do like Adam Schiff did when he impeached, when he led the impeachment of President Trump, where he said, we're going to impeach President Trump, and then we're going to find the rationale to impeach him. That's not how it should work in America. And what we're doing is continuing to assemble this information, which is becoming more damning all the time. When you have um, Hunter Biden, sending a text message to a Chinese businessman saying, I'm sitting here with my father and you guys haven't made your million dollar payment. When are you going to make it? I mean, basically a shakedown. When you have, um, uh, when you have trusted sources, whistleblowers that are saying there were payments made from Burisma and other Ukrainian companies to the Biden family. Now we have not 100% proven that, but there's very strong evidence that that has happened. We need to continue to ask the questions and get this information before the American people. I remember it was a few years ago. I believe you and I had talked about this, about the Hunter Biden. And because, you know, in the mornings I look up, you know, when I when I post our just our headlines, like links from all the big stories in the U.S. and the world uh, across, uh, uh, well, across the state, across the country, across the world, duh. And I remember seeing, I think it was on New York Post, it was about Hunter Biden's laptop, but was fascinating to me when I went to all the other ones. Every other news outlet, I look at like, you know, all the big ones, Reuters and BBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, I mean, all the, you know, top 15, 20. Nobody else was doing a story on it. I remember we talked about that going, that's kind of weird. So New York Post is supposed to be crazy or something, but that seems like a big story. And then, then it kind of just went away. And now it seems to be picking up like uh, national media, mainstream media is starting to kind of pick up on that a little bit. Where are we with that? With Hunter yeah, Biden? Is, the, how is that the, going? Yeah, the American, this is starting to seep in with the American public. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned earlier, the FBI has been targeting, suppressing, and censoring. And this was part of the suppression that you just brought up, that New York Post story. They went back, the FBI, they went back to the social media companies and they said, be careful of disinformation that may be coming out. You want to make sure that you don't put out Russia disinformation. What did the social media companies do? They okay. said, OK, FBI, we won't do that. What are we finding out from the whistleblowers now? The FBI knew way back in 2019 that the Hunter Biden laptop was legitimate. So they clearly did not share this information with the American people. And furthermore, in October of 2020, the 51 intelligence officials that signed the letter saying the Hunter Biden laptop story is clearly Russia disinformation. The FBI never came out, though they knew a year previous saying 
No, that's not true. That is disinformation. That there is legitimate information on there. The FBI didn't do it. And that is where I see the election improprieties that went on, mm. where they injected themselves in what should have been an election issue and they suppressed the information. And that's ultimately what I was driving at with my questions with see. Director Ray. Are you going to inject yourself like that in the 2024 elections? Because it was at a minimum inappropriate. And we have that information as a result of whistleblowers who are saying, I can't work at the FBI anymore and lie this way or allow lies to continue to be told by the leadership of the FBI. That's why these whistleblowers keep coming to us. And there's a lot of them. Well, that's dis disconcerting, I think. Right. And it doesn't matter if it was against a Republican or Democrat, but, you know, the FBI, you know, stay in lane, do your job. And I I don't want to get that. That's a whole other thing that we could just go down a rabbit hole on. But it's a little disconcerting. That's the, so that's it, it just point, is. Ben, is that, you know, to a large extent, people are, you know, some people will be getting, well, good. Trump got his um, just rewards. I don't, it doesn't matter. It does not matter where you stand on Donald Trump. If they can take out a president. Yeah, that's they can take out any single American, including anyone watching this um, watching this show right now, or Catholics down in southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, let's Catholics. quickly uh, shift gears here because I know you have a hard cutoff time at nine o'clock. Um, I just wanted to get your perspective here, or your kind of your takeaways. I know you've been busy in Washington D.C., but obviously the budget was just finished, or, or Evers. Signed, you know, line and vetoed, I think 51 things, what was it, last week. And I want to ask what, if you saw that. I'm assuming, of course, you've paid attention to that, being, you know, 7th Congressional District representative in Wisconsin. Granted, you work now in D.C., but you still represent us. Uh, you were on the Joint Finance Committee when you were in the Wisconsin Senate. So is this one of those when you look at this, like what was sent? And I don't know if you had a chance to see what was actually sent going, OK, I would have done this different or I really like what they did here. So first, do you, do you pay attention to that stuff, the, specifically the Joint Finance Committee and what they're doing just because you were on that for, for a number of years? So you're very familiar with it. And then secondly, what do you think of, uh, of the line item vetoes? Yeah, so I do pay attention because there's always this nexus between federal and state. Yeah. And um, so there's always stuff that affects uh, whether it's state or federal. Um, yeah, Governor Evers got really aggressive with the veto pen. And um, I mean, it's 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 going to hit the people of the state of Wisconsin. First of all, I don't remember the number, but I think it's. If you're making over thirty six or thirty seven thousand dollars, Governor Evers views you as rich that you should not get a tax cut because with his veto, he prevented people from getting that tax cut. So you're going to see middle class people that could have had like a seven, eight hundred dollar tax cut. I mean, you could ask Senator Quinn about this for the exact numbers, but seven, eight hundred dollars. They're not going to have that now. And Governor Ewer said, I'm keeping this money in Madison because we know how to spend it better than you do putting it in your own pocket. The other thing we did with some of his vetoes is he hit northern Wisconsin hard. And once again, I defer to the locally elected officials up there. But my understanding is that like Amnicon Falls and Patterson State Parks, there was money that was allocated for those parks. He vetoed it. There was money for, I think, fish hatcheries like the Brule Fish Hatchery. He vetoed that money. I mean, what is that all about? I mean, does he have a vendetta against northern Wisconsin or something? It really, um, I don't know why he did some of those vetoes the way he did, because he's really harming the people of across Wisconsin in regards to allowing them to keep more money in their pocket. But he also targeted northern Wisconsin. Well, I mean, it's kind of easy target because there's not as many voters. Uh, well, you and I, of course, both know we do a show. So you're on the second Thursday of the month. And then Senator Roman Quinn is on the last Thursday of the month. Um, and we've known him for a long time. Obviously, uh, everyone on here has known him because he's in the assembly, you know, had a little sabbatical there. <laughs> and now he's in the Senate. Um, and we all know him. Uh, he's active, he's engaged, he's involved. He has strong views and opinions, but he usually likes to hear everything from everyone. That's how he is. He's not a sensationalist at all. 
And here is something. This was Wednesday. I just looked it up on my phone on DrydenWire.com. Wednesday, July 5th, so, uh, I don't know, eight days ago. Here was his press release. This was after the uh, Evers' budget and when all that came out. His headline was, Evers stabs northern Wisconsin in the back. Now, that is the most aggressive I have ever in my life heard Senator Quinn, Romaine Quinn, actually use those kinds of words. Because that's just not him. And when he says that, it's got to be pretty bad if he's saying it that way. Now, I know there'll be some people who disagree with me, but fine, you don't know him. I do, and I'm telling you, that's just not the words that usually come out of his mouth. That got him really fired up. And just yesterday, he had a guest column, and the guest column's headline was, Evers makes a bad situation even worse. Yeah, you had said default to our area uh, elected officials, and we've had some from, you know, Gay, uh, Magnifici, and the others in our area, Representative Armstrong, Chance Green, etc., yeah, I don't think a lot. Again, I don't know how many people down in Madison even care, but we certainly do up here. And when you're even getting people riled up that much, uh, saying specifically northern Wisconsin, what's going on? This budget killed us. That's saying something. Well, and especially when, I mean, there was there's so much money sloshing down around down in Madison that you know there's a few priorities of projects that are you know relatively small in terms of the overall budget. I mean, I don't get why you would veto things like that. And especially when you go out and you say, hey, I'm all for tourism. I believe in tourism. And then you veto stuff like for state parks. I mean, how is that not tourism? Um, And so to me, that says he's targeting people. And I hope people that are on the other side of the aisle, I hope they're paying attention to this. Because, I mean, you know that we're going to use hyperbole sometimes. We're going to be partisan sometimes. But, man, that was, um, I mean, that was bordering on mean what he did to northern Wisconsin. Uh, so you have a hard cutoff time. You have to get in, I don't know, hearings, committees, voting. Yeah, so we have a hard cutoff in like four minutes. Uh, thanks for going through all of this stuff. We could talk a lot more about all this. is so fun. I, I love having you on every month. But, uh, as always, at the end of the show, what is coming up? Uh, for you in the district or in D.C. over the next week or two? Yeah, so we got a couple of weeks to go here before we hit the August break. Uh, The National Defense Authorization Bill is before us now, a very important bill, national defense, one of the um, most important things that we deal with. So that's ongoing as we speak. But we also have a Western Caucus trip that's coming in. I belong to the Western Caucus. They deal with uh, their primary focus is natural resources issues. And as you know, Ben, um, I'm really focused on natural resources yep. issues and sit on the natural resources committee. So we're going to have the Western caucus come in, do a tour up in Northwestern Wisconsin. We're going to go see the Sonovus refinery in Superior that just recently reopened. Sure. Yeah. We're going to go see Minnesota power just across the border over, uh, on the Minnesota side. That's trying to, uh, in partnership with Dairyland power to build a new natural gas, um, electric generation plant in Superior. We're going to uh, do some review of forestry. Um, obviously, we have the national forests, but we're going to take a look at the management of county, state, and national forests that are going on in the same area, see who does it better, see how they do it. And um, so, yeah, we got some elected represent some of my colleagues that are going to come from around the country, and they're going to visit us the end of next Outstanding. week. Outstanding. Hey, I always have to ask. I'm going to get it right this time. It's Kevin. No. Yep, Kevin. Uh, how's Kevin McCarthy doing? So I usually say Mike McCarthy, and you have to correct me. You usually let me go for like five minutes and keep saying Mike McCarthy before you finally correct me, but I think I got it right this time. Uh, every, you know, I go to The Hill. I love that website. And it's always like the top five feature stories every day. There's something about Kevin McCarthy and what is going on. Obviously, we only have like a minute left here, but just how's he doing overall? Things still going well? He's managing the whatever he's supposed to be managing. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a good job. I mean, think about it. He's got 222 members in his conference on the Republican side. It's like herding cats. <laughs> so and you've got all these diverse interests that are going on. So it is a tough job. Yeah. But, you know, the, um, um, it, it, it's inconclusive at this point. I mean, you judge people after the end of a session. And it's ongoing at this point. We're going to see ongoing. how things turn out. We got the budget. Like the FBI right now. <laughs> I, 
I mean, that's funny. I'm not going to judge somebody on the first six months in a two year yeah. uh, cycle because okay. there's a whole lot more chapters to be written. Yeah. Hey, the first few chapters done a pretty good job. A couple okay. things I disagree with in the debt limit, but otherwise, um, uh, Lots of chapters to be written yet. And so you said, so that is August break. So you come on the second Thursday of the month. So I, I don't know what date that is next month. So what will we be talking about next month? Will that be after in a month from now? Will that be when, when sessions already finished? Um, no. So it'll be, we'll be on our August break and uh, we'll probably talk about uh, the national defense authorization act. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we may be talking about um, the Western caucus trip. We'll be talking about, Oh, we'll yeah. be talking about a lot of stuff, judiciary and natural resources. Oh, I can't wait. All right. Well, you got to get running. Thank Maybe. you so very much, Congressman. Special thank you to our guest today, Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District Representative, Tom Tiffany, for taking the time to chat with us today. I'll see you right back here on Tuesday when Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald and I will be back for our weekly Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy Show. So until then, for Dryden.com, I'm Ben Dryden saying thank you for watching, and as always, have a blessed day.